Roger, the last two times I spoke to you, you won the tournament. Mm. Shall we make it a third time? Third time lucky, let's hope so. I mean, thankfully I won the last couple of times you spoke to me, but uh, no, I love playing here and I hope uh, I can play another good tournament. Obviously, you start from scratch. I'm not in the finals yet, so it's a long way to go and uh, now focus is more on, on practicing, making sure I'm in good shape. Also, at the same time, I put pressure on you, of course, because we all expect, again, y you to win the tournament. Um, how do you deal every single time, every day, every week with this pressure? Well, I mean, I guess you kind of get used to it eventually, especially in the times when you're world number one and you feel like every other title you're going for, you maybe have to defend. So you, you kind of gain experience by that and then eventually you just know that what can you do? You can just deal with it and try your best and uh, handle that pressure, you know, and that's what I've been able to do pretty well actually over the years. Of course, sometimes pressure has also gotten to me, um, but today I just know if I give everything I have, that's all I can do and that's what I'll try here again this week in Rotterdam. When you were young, you also were angry on, on the court and mm -hmm. sometimes throwing records and you said, yeah, at one point I, I found a click. Is it a click you found yourself or are they exercise or did you find someone to help you with that? Um, look, I tried to speak to a lot of people, making sure that they maybe give me their opinions and their advice on what they think I should be doing. Uh, many of my friends and families told me I should just relax, you know, just it's just a tennis match. I was like, yeah, I know, but I can't keep it in, you know, it's all got to get out. And then eventually I said, you know, I think if I want to keep on playing many tournaments, many matches throughout my career and I go crazy every single time I just won't be able to handle it I'll have a heart attack you know <laughs> by the time I'm 22 so ev eventually I relaxed a little bit um, had to find the right balance between sort of fire and ice and uh, I managed to do that and then that was a, a good decision for me but at the end of the day the decision came from myself and I think that's what you have to do if you want to achieve things is you have to take the right decisions yourself as well Normally, um, Miami is a mandatory tournament for all the players. It's not mm. for you. Can you explain right. why? Well, I, I let me try to remember the rules uh, and regulations. I don't remember everything, you know, with all the, in the rule book. But I think if you're over 30 years old, if you've played over 10 years on tour, if you've won a certain amount of... Uh, or if maybe if you've six been world uh, six hundred matches, matches, or you've be been world number one in the past, you get exempts. So I can then pull out uh, also beforehand, and that's what I like to do. Is if I know I'm not going to be playing, why I know they're going to enter me automatically, but I don't want to mislead fans. So and I was uh, planning that schedule anyway. So I just wanted to make sure that people knew what my schedule was, not that people bought flight tickets, tickets to come see me, and then I'm not there and they feel tricked. So I um, that was a decision this year. So in that period of time, I will take some time off and then practice extremely hard. You know, leading into the clay court season after that. Are your, is your goal still on the number one spot, or because you're missing out on? of course Miami important tournament or do you have different goals for this year well I mean world number one I guess it comes into the equation if you if I win maybe a slam or two plus you know another few masters 1000 so um, I believe in the big picture making sure I stay healthy and look at the you know looking far ahead so I want to stay on tour for as long as possible I know I won't become world number one after the next two or three events you know that I know that but looking ahead for the next year or two uh, that's kind of what I need to do right now um, and if I do play well all of a sudden you can become it again um, it's not as big as of a priority as it was maybe last year but nevertheless I will give everything I have and if I do play well there will be a chance so I just have to give myself the opportunity now last question um, you always seem so relaxed in everything what you do the whole day you're doing all press conference you're taking a lot of time for everybody you're a nice person friendly person you're a very social person because you do a lot of good stuff for right. kids as well are you the ultimate proof that you can be a nice social person and be the best in your sport I guess so, you know. Uh, many people always said I was too nice in the early days of my playing career. They thought I had to be the bad guy, you know, and toughen up a bit and become more nasty on the court to have success. And I always said, you know, if I have to do that, then I'd rather stop. You know, I just try to do it the nice way, play according to the rules, um, you know, be nice to fans and sponsors and media in the process. Then life on tour is also going to be much more enjoyable, you know, and it's actually worked really well for me. Um, I think also the tour overall has become extremely friendly I don't want to say I'm the reason for that but I think the the players are pretty relaxed these days these 
these times, you know, which is nice. I um, obviously want to see enough fire out on the court, but uh, I'm happy I was able to manage my career that way, and I hope many other players can do that. Can I think do we, the all, same. we all appreciate it. Thank you very much, right. and I wish you all the best. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you.